During the last quarter of 1965, the Beatles recorded and released the album Rubber Soul. In the 60s through at least the early 70s, an album released by any major rock band wasn't just a record, it was a cultural event. But Beatles albums eclipsed all others in both pop culture and musical trend effects. Rubber Soul was no exception. The growing sophistication of the recordings was impossible to ignore, and something else was happening as well. The lyrics were beginning to move away from the milk toast offerings of the early 60s, taking on subject matter that would have been considered impossible to sell on Meet the Beatles, for example. Case in point, John Lennon's introspective view of his life journey in the song, In My Life. But the lyrics were only part of what made In My Life one of the most enduring songs recorded by the Beatles. And here are 10 things that you didn't know about the wistful song on the album Rubber Soul that was in my life. Number 10. It was never released as a single in the US or the UK. The Beatles song In My Life was released on the album Rubber Soul in December of 1965. That was it. In the US and UK anyway. It was not released as a single in the United Kingdom or the United States. However, it was released as a single in some other countries, such as Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. Number 9. John wrote the song in reaction to a 1964 interview question about his songs being less insightful than his book. In 1964, British journalist Kenneth Alsop challenged Lennon via an interview question about the depth of his songwriting to become more self-oriented in his songwriting. John set forth to put more of his real life into a song, therefore, and the seeds of In My Life were planted. This was one of those relatively rare instances where John Lennon was pleased with the final result. In a 1980 interview, he said that he considered the song to be his first real major piece of work because it was the first time that he used lyrics that were rooted in his own life. The original lyrics were a narrative based upon a bus route he used to take in Liverpool, which incidentally happened to include mention of a familiar stop along the way, Penny Lane. But anyway, Lennon didn't like those original lyrics, later saying that they were ridiculous and also the most boring sort of what I did on my holidays bus trip song. So he ended up reworking the words, and only a few lines from the original draft remained in the finished song. Number 8. In My Life was played at Kurt Cobain's funeral. The Beatles were a very important musical influence on Kurt Cobain, and in journals that he kept while working with the group Nirvana, Cobain referred to Lennon as his idol. This song was played during Cobain's funeral in homage to that influence. Number 7. This is one of the first recordings on which Paul McCartney played his 1964 Rickenbacker 4001S bass. Paul acquired his new Rickenbacker 4001S in September of 1965 after the Hollywood Bowl concert on the 1965 World Tour. The sessions for Rubber Soul were the first recordings that he made with it. Number 6. John and George used their matching blue Fender Stratocasters. Mal Evans purchased matching 1961 Fender Stratocasters in Sonic Blue for John and George in 1965 while the Beatles were recording the album Help. Harrison used his Strat extensively on Rubber Soul, including on the track In My Life. He continued to use the guitar for the remainder of the group's albums. In 1967, in the midst of the hippie culture, along with the Beatles taking LSD, Harrison painted his Strat with fluorescent day-glow paint and named it Rocky. Harrison's quote was, During 1967, everybody started painting everything, and I decided to paint it. I got some day-glow paint, which was quite a new invention in them days, and just sat up late one night and did it. Number 5. The song's original position in the playing order on the album wasn't the same. 
Mixing was done in the control room of Studio 2 with George Martin, Norman Smith, and second engineer Ron Pender at the controls. Interestingly, a surviving acetate pressing shows that the running order of Rubber Soul at this point placed In My Life as the third song on side one after Nowhere Man. This decision was changed shortly thereafter, apparently, to the fourth song on side two after I'm Looking Through You. Number four. Paul McCartney was certainly involved, but the extent of that involvement isn't clear. Both John and Paul were involved with this song, but the extent to which Paul McCartney was involved is controversial. John Lennon said that he had presented the song complete, except for the middle portion, and that is what Paul contributed. On the other hand, Paul McCartney said that he did the music from beginning to end and took his inspiration from songs by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Number three. The lyrics included a specific reference to former bandmate Stu Sutcliffe. According to Lennon's friend and biographer, Peter Schotten, the lines, some are dead and some are living, and in my life I've loved them all, referred to himself and Stuart Sutcliffe, who died in 1962. Lennon also thought of his aunt Mimi and his wife Cynthia, as well as other friends. Number two. The song was recorded almost entirely within two hours on October 18, 1965. Beginning at 3.45 p.m. during the last two hours of a very unusually short three-hour session, three takes of In My Life were recorded with simply guitars, bass, and drums. Take three was judged to be the best basic track, and with vocal and guitar overdubs added, it was 95% complete when they left the studio at 5.45 p.m. that evening, except for the instrumental solo in the middle. And now, number one. George Martin was entirely responsible for the solo in the middle of the song at half speed and one octave low. After the October 18th session, only one thing was needed to complete the song, the solo fill. It was quite common for them to do a track and then leave a place in the middle of it for a solo fill, which is what was done for this song. Before the guys left on October 18th, John Lennon suggested that George Martin supply a solo himself. The song was completed on October 22, 1965, with Martin writing a Bach-influenced piece and then he tried it first on a Hammond organ. Well, not only could he not get the sound to fit the song, but he found that he could not play it at the song tempo either. George Martin remembers this. I thought it would be rather nice to have a harpsichord-like solo. I did it with what I call a wound-up piano, which was at double speed partly because you get a harpsichord sound by shortening the attack of everything, but also because I couldn't play it at real speed anyway. So I played it on a piano at exactly half normal speed and down an octave. When you bring the tape back up to normal speed again, it sounds pretty brilliant. It's a means of tricking everybody into thinking you can do something really well. It began as a narrative of a bus trip but then morphed into a much more generalized, reminiscent view of life's journey. Regardless of the contribution level of Paul McCartney, John Lennon was happy with, and very proud of, In My Life. It has attracted a lot of attention over the years as well. The best count I could find of the number of times in my life has been covered by other artists is 212 and Rolling Stone magazine rated it as number five on the list of the Beatles' greatest 100 songs. Not bad for a bus trip through Liverpool and three hours in a recording studio. Hmm?